Ara says, is the biological father of an illegitimate girl mahram for her? Must she cover herself in front of him, not travel with him, and not be alone with him, as if he is a stranger? What about an uh, illegitimate son and his biological, biological mother? As for your question, Sarah, the whole incident is summarized by the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, in a long story where he said, The born child belongs to the owner of the bed, which means that if the woman was married, then the owner of the bed is the husband. So the illegitimate child belongs by default to her husband. This is the default. وَلِلْعَاهِرْ hajar, And to the fornicator, the man who is allegedly the biological father, gets nothing except a stone, meaning nothing. He has nothing to do with the illegitimate child. Even if he claims the child and says it's mine. So from this hadith and other evidences, scholars said that if a man fornicated with a woman and she does not have a husband, so she's a single lady and she conceived and she gave birth to a child and assuming that the, the child was a girl, the man is not the father of the girl because it was born out of wedlock, which means that he does not have any responsibilities towards her. She has no responsibilities towards him. His siblings are not her uncles and aunts. Um, his children from a legitimate marriage are not her siblings because there is no relationship, there is no bond between him and her. You may make a DNA test. This doesn't change a thing because this is related to an Islamic ruling, which is whether the, the marriage was legitimately Islamic or not. Hence, there was no marriage, then there is no relationship between them. Now, having said that, this does not mean that his legitimate son can marry her. Because of this incident is in a gray area. And in the story that I told you about, which is long, I could not say it here, the Prophet والسلام, said to Abd ibn Zam'a, who was claiming his brother, against Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, who said to the Prophet ﷺ, may Allah be pleased with him, that his brother fornicated and claimed to be the father of that child, who Abd claims is my brother. He was born in my house and my father was alive and all of the, the, the evidences show that he is my brother. When the Prophet ﷺ said the hadith, he deprived Sa'd's brother from his right in that child. He says, no, you have nothing to do with the child. And he called the child after Abd ibn Zam'a's father. He's his brother. But when the Prophet saw the resemblance of the child to Sa'd's brother, the one who fornicated, the fornicator, he said to his wife, Saudah bin Zam'a, who this child is now legally her brother. Her, his name is exactly like her name, the, the same father, Zam'a. So the Prophet said to his wife, Saudah, wear the hijab from him. Though he's your brother, technically speaking, but you should not display yourself to him as you do to your brothers and to your mahrams. 
So from this hadith, we understand that the biological father has no rights over his uh, um, daughter that was born out of wedlock, uh, wedlock, no responsibilities. But at the same time, this doesn't mean he can marry her. Now, having said that, it is highly recommended that he's kind to her, that he supports her, that he provides for her. But this is out of kindness, not out of Islamic ruling. As for her second part of the question, what about if an illegitimate son and his biological mother? I think that this is a no-brainer because she is his mother. She's the one who gave birth to him. Whether he was conceived out of wedlock or a, a, a legitimate marriage doesn't make any difference because she is the one who gave birth to him. So he is her uh, son.